So this talk is going to be about the fossil Artipithecus ramidus, uh, Arty, as she's been reported in the news. And um, now this is this is the second take of this I've made. I, I'm going to try to keep it. I, I, I had it, I had originally planned to do this, you know, sort of more fancy talk uh, with you know diagrams and everything, uh, so pictures from the articles. And I decided I'm going to try to do it this way. Um, however, I tended to ramble on. So I said, I'm going to make this two parts. Um, and this is actually going to be critical of the um, Artipithecus finds, one aspect of the Artipithecus finds, okay? So just keep that in mind. And I want to make it really clear before I start this, I am not in any way questioning the validity of the Artipithecus fossils um, as legitimate and important human ancestors, or at least related relatives of human ancestors. Um, I'm not in any way supporting any of the creationist claims that have come out, uh, Casey Luskin and others, about this fossil whatsoever. Um, I'm not questioning the theory of evolution or the theory of human evolution or aspects of human evolution at all. So, um, don't, don't, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm merely questioning, there's a couple of things that I, questions I had about the, about the data. So um, I made a video a month or two ago uh, because the si Journal Science had put out a special 11 article issue dedicated to Artipithecus that was made free to the public. I'll put another link to that down below. Um, it's was an, it's an amazing and unprecedented thing in the in the practically in any science to come out with the, for that kind of um, thing to happen uh, was it was just great and you know aspects of the morphology, uh, the ecology, the sexual biology, the habitat, the environment of the, of the times, everything, bunches of articles um, were all put out simultaneously. It was pretty, pretty amazing. And, and to, that's great. However, I have not, I haven't really had the time to go through all of the articles as carefully as I wanted to. I like to read, when I read especially articles of, of areas of interest of mine, human evolution being one of those, I like to go through piece by piece bit by bit, looking up the references, looking up the sources, and I haven't had the, op the opportunity to do that with all of the articles. Um, I did skip ahead to the ones I liked the best, uh, most notably the one on the sexual biology, being one of my areas of interest. Uh, this one, by the way, has been heavily criticized. Um, uh, and I, I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'll get into that in this, I probably won't in this talk, because I want to keep it to one thing. Um, but, this one, this article here, by Owen Lovejoy and others, um, is on the wrist morphology of Artipithecus, and this to me, I was really, I was kind of surprised because now the sexual biology paper immediately got a lot of criticism, um, including a respondent letter back to Science. Um, I, I haven't seen the original article, but I've, re I've read stuff from the author of that of that letter, uh, highly criticizing. That that whole concept um, of inferring the sexual biology of of the species from from the fossils we have, and and I think right rightfully so. The criticisms were very valid. Um, but this article on the wrist morphology, which to me, in my mind, is not only the most interesting of the articles published, but also the most should have been the most controversial. This one should have. I mean. If it's because if this article is true, if what these authors are saying is true, then truly we are. Um, I don't want to say use the term a world of hurt, but we. What we know about the evolution of humans and African apes is a whole lot different than we believed it to be so for the last thirty years or longer, uh, forty years or longer. Um, and that's a pretty big thing. Something like that shouldn't go. And I've seen in a lot of the science blogs, and even the good reputable ones, um, where they've been critical of some of the papers in that journal from that from that issue. This one is almost given. It's been given sort of a a, a go ahead as as in, um, you know, you know, this was amazing, and um, you know, whatever, and. The problem I had with it is that to do that with it, one would have to assume that the data in this paper is so solid, it is so irrefutable, 
that it can't even be questioned, or that it not can't even be questioned, but that there's no question that it's valid, that it's important, and that it changes things. And I think that given the impact of it, if it is indeed true, this should have been the most questioned. Um, every single scrap of evidence that this paper presents should be reanalyzed and reexamined. Casts of the fossils looked at, you know, originals when possible. Every single aspect of it should have been scrutinized carefully because it's really that important, in my opinion. Because um, what this paper says, and that's this is this is you know, again, this is given usually a one or two sentence little blurb in in science blogs. But this says that Artipithecus was not a knuckle-walking ape. And, even more important than that, that Artipithecus was not derived from a knuckle-walking ancestor. Now, the implication of that might sound like big, big deal, right? Who cares if she, how, you know, she didn't knuckle-walk? Big deal. What, what importance is that? Actually, it has absolutely critical importance because um, as we understand, as both the fossil and the molecular data has told us now for the last 30 years, um, human beings are derived African apes. And more important than that, we are derived from the chimpanzee clade of the African apes. That doesn't mean we're chimps, okay? I'm not, gonna, I'm not making that thing. What that means is, is that there's a clade of African apes, gorilla split off from it, and then the human chimp ancestor evolved on, and then the chimps derived, the chimps diverged from that ancestor, and then humans and chimps split. Um, more recently than gorillas and chimps split. Gorillas are knuckle walkers, so are chimpanzees. If this paper is true, that means that gorillas and chimps, both species of chimp, both species of gorilla, I think it's, I think they've, they kind of a species. Anyway as well as a number of extinct relatives of those of those apes evolved knuckle walking independent of each other and that is something that is so important and so huge um that means that this highly specialized um wrist morphology finger morphology the locking mechanism in the wrist that enables an animal to knuckle walk um, the shape there's 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 the the a keel at, on the distal end of the humerus I believe it is um, that's only found in knuckle walkers that this this specialized characteristic um, is found only in gorillas and chimps evolved identically now it, there's people there's been some talk of there's a paper out suggesting that that evidence that they did diverge before this happened but that's that it did arrive independently but. If you look at that paper, it's pretty questionable. The point is, is that very similar, if not identical, um, knuckle walking with the exact same wrist bones being used to support the weight, the same wrist bones supporting the the uh, tendons and adductors and things that hold the wrist in place, evolved identically twice in two separate clades of the hominid line. Um, that's huge. I mean, that should, that's freaking big um, it doesn't make a lot of sense parsimoniously but then now this is this is what really bothered me the most about again the Lovejoy paper on this um, is that a scientific concept it's one thing to propose a new theory that, you know that's that's how science grows and develops a new theory that explains this data you're discovering and describing working it into a new framework that explains it um, and attempting to explain past and then make predictions about future findings. And these they authors do that to a certain point. But I'm going to do two two little things that are somewhat damning to that. Uh, this is a paper by Richmond and Strait. Uh, several years, I think it's a 2001. I might be wrong on that, on the date on it. Um, this is a detailed analysis, including morphometric analyses. Uh, I won't say F squared. It's not going to show up. Showing the that a number of humans have more than more than others, but the fact that human beings in this according to this analysis and get this, Australopithecines have strong 
retained knuckle walking characteristics in their wrist morphology. Okay? Identical um, to a knuckle walker. That has to be explained away. Do, what do they say about it? They don't they don't meant first of all, this paper, this Richmond and Straight paper is not cited in this, which is interesting. It should be I mean, there's not many papers on wrist morphology of hominins, um, at least not from the last decade. Uh, this is one of them. It should have been cited. Um, oh, hey, what do you know? I'm out of time. I'm going to make part two.